Welcome to a video on the Pierce Oscillator or the LC Crystal Oscillator. Okay, so we will have a look at properties and applications, the working principle, some calculation and design. Then I'm going to ask you to do a design, and lastly, we're going to look at some simulations. Okay, so the properties is the Pierce oscillator works with a quartz crystal. Okay, so a quartz crystal is being placed under pressure, creating electromechanical resonance. So this creates a very stable frequency, even with variations in temperature. So on most boards and computers and chip related things you will find a crystal resonator to set the frequency so that is the typical application now the q factor of these crystal oscillators is extremely high they are self-starting and very high frequency generation is possible um to go and look at the peak circuits and whatnot 4 megahertz 16 megahertz 20 megahertz crystals usually going with those and typically it's a very simple circuit external to a chip working on the same principle as what we are going to look at in 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 this video okay so these does not um require non-linear amplitude control and they are self-limiting oscillators due to the very very high q factor um, they are very pure um, sinusoidal providers. So we can implement these using BJTs or MOS, which is very typical for the high frequency. And for lower frequency, if you, or if you have op amp with a uh, high enough bandwidth, you can implement it using op amp as well. So the quartz crystal vibrates under pressure so if you look at the symbol of a quartz crystal it's usually two lines with a block in the middle so it represents the two electrodes connected to the crystal this we can relate back to the model that's set up the crystal being a rlc kind of resonator and the parallel capacitance is the electrodes in the model okay so basically, the series capacitance here is at 12 femtofarads, which is 10 to a minus 15, um, if you think back to electronic basics, which is extremely small, and it has a very large inductance. Okay. And it also has bit of a series resistance since it is a um, physical object being placed under pressure there is some resistance related to this so the fact that we have a very large inductor uh, makes it we can use it in the same fashion as a culprit's oscillator the very uh, low capacitance makes that we can have very high frequency generation and the small resistance here will be responsible for our Q factor. Okay, there is a lot more implementations available on the internet than explained in this video, but most of them will have the same working principle. Okay. So if we do a frequency sweep over our crystal, you will find that we have inductive region and capacitive region. So the system will first be inductive, I have a huge resonance with a series components, and then have a large resonance downwards for the parallel components. So this frequency here describes our fundamental and there is a very small frequency difference between 
the series resonance and the parallel resonance. Okay, so the op amp and VJT implementation of these is quite simple. If you look at the back here, we have a crystal and two equivalent capacitors. So this will remind you of the Colpitz oscillator. So we have our big inductor sitting right here with a capacitor in series with it, which is going to create our LC oscillation. These two capacitors are to place our crystal under pressure. And we just add a small capacitor here so that we don't have any of our DC influencing our system. Okay. Now, instead of using a collector resistor, typically you will place an RF choke here, and this amplifier has a huge gain. The RF choke choice should be resonant with your resonator element. Okay. So we want a huge gain and two capacitors placing this crystal under pressure. You will see the same kind of configuration of op amp, and we apply some feedback to have a big gain, but you always have to consider the gain bandwidth of your amplifier. Okay, so some calculations. This is a two megahertz crystal model. So for the Q factor, we have our Frequency multiplied by our series inductance divided by our series resistance. So that will give us our, our Q factor. Then for our series um, resonance and our parallel resonance, you'll see that this is just a LC resonator and this looks like a Colpitz resonator. Okay. But in most cases, our parallel resonance is much larger than our series resonance. So our series will be the more dominant one if we set up um, our capacitors to be much larger than our series capacitor. So your fundamental frequency would rather be the LC component of the, the crystal. Okay, so if we plug all of these values into our equations, we'll find that our parallel frequency is 2.18 megahertz and our series frequency is 2.15 megahertz. So the difference between the two is just 30 kilohertz. We calculate the Q factor. We have a Q factor of 55,000. Now that is a huge Q factor. Okay, so basically limiting it to just almost a single frequency with, with no um, shifting at all. Q factor like this usually indicates a very good um, band pass or band reject filter. Okay. So, the problem that you can pause the video on is to design a Pierce oscillator with a 2 MHz crystal. Um, so, design the amplifiers for 100 volts per volt gain or more. Calculate and select standard resistors and capacitors for the designs. So, do a design for an op amp. I'm using a plus minus 10 volt source. And then do a BJT design biased at 1 milliampere. Stabilize the bias, design for maximum swing, um, but use a emitter voltage of 0 0.3 volts and use a 10 volt source um, for the supply and a RF choke instead of a collector resistor. So that the output is maximized and please simulate the problems. Okay, so pause and I will be back with a solution in a moment. So, for our solution, 
again for op amp 100 volts per volts or larger so let's just go over 100 volts per volts selecting r11 kilo ohm and r2 100 kilo ohm we have our gain for the capacitor selection to place the crystal on at pressure let's pick a 27 picofarad um most data sheets for these crystals will suggest a capacitor of 22 picofarads, 27 picofarads. It's typically in this range in any case. But the reasoning is this is much larger than 4 picofarads, which is much, much larger than our 12 femtofarads. So that we ensure that the series capacitance is our dominant and this thing will resonate at our um, 2.15 megahertz. For our PJT implementation, we can keep our capacitors at the same values and designing RE at 1 milliampere and 0.3 volts. This will result in a 350 ohm resistor, assuming that our collector and emitter currents are the same. Our RF choke has a very low um, resistance as well, but in this case, the gain of our amplifier will be determined by the transconductance of our amplifier and the actual output impedance of the transistor itself, which will be extremely high gain. Um, the input capacitor to the amplifier, you can choose it a high value, go with 10 to 100 times C1 and C2. Then the biasing, our base voltage is our emitter plus our VBE, should be 1 volt in this case, and our combined RB1 RB2 is 100 kilo ohms, so RB2 works out at 10k, RV1 works out at 90k, so as an E24 value that would be 91 kilo ohms. Let's go over to the simulation and see if they are working. Right, so I built my circuit in Spice, and I'm using a non-ideal op-amp, so this thing actually starts up. And I built my own crystal symbol and model. So as a schematic, I created it and gave it two terminals A and B. And um, open a symbol, I just built the symbol and gave it the parameters A and B so that I can use the inductor model that I showed you in the presentation in here okay so let's run our crystal oscillator okay if we click here very large output but this amplifier is already experiencing slew rate but if we go to the back here so typically you would rather take the output from this side. This amplifier is more or less acting like a switch. So it's just switching on and off. But we can get our output here at the feedback. Okay, a nice sinusoidal, very high um, Q factor. So let's look at our FFT. And isn't that a very beautiful sight? Um, not so many harmonics and very close to 2 megahertz and remember that any capacitors that you do choose um, has influence and there is also some parasitic capacitors in the op amp itself so yeah there is our oscillator working so let's jump over to my bjt implementation so here is my BJT implementation. Um, 
let's run this and see. Right. And there we go. High frequency. Almost double our rail voltages due, due to this inductor. And we have some non-linear um, this forming due to our saturation of our amplifier. So yeah, this would be a typical example where you put this through a Schmidt trigger for digital implementation or other. But our oscillator is working. Let's check out the FFT. And we have a bit more harmonics. But as I said, the crystal is usually used more in digital applications. So I just want a high level or a low level. And this is situated nicely at 2 megahertz. Okay, thank you for watching. See you in another video.